Humanity really is not evolved to think of existential threats in general. We're evolved to think about things that are very close to us, near term, to, to be upset with other humans, and, and not, not to really to think about things that could destroy humanity as a whole. But then in recent decades, recent, just really in the last century, we had n nuclear bombs, which are, could potentially destroy civilization, obviously. Uh, we have AI, which could destroy civilization. Uh, we have global warming, which could destroy civilization, or, or at least severely disrupt uh, civilization. You know, it would be something in the same way that humans destroyed the habitat of primates. I mean, it, it, it wouldn't necessarily be destroyed, but we might be relegated to a small corner of the world. When Homo sapiens became much smarter than other primates, I pushed all the other ones into small habitats. They're just in the way. You could make a swarm of assassin drones for very little money by just taking the, the, the face ID chip that's used in cell phones and uh, having a small explosive charge and a, and a standard drone and have them just do a grid sweep of the building until they find the person they're looking for, ram into them and, ex and explode. You can do that right now. No extra, no new technologies needed right now. Probably a bigger risk than, than being hunted down by a, a drone is that uh, AI would be used to make incredibly effective propaganda uh, that would not seem like pro propaganda. So these are deep fakes? Yeah, influence the direction of society, influence elections, artificial intelligence. Just hones the message, hones the message, check, looks, at the feed, looks at the feedback, makes this message slightly better. Within milliseconds, it, could, it can um, adapt its message and, and shift and react to news. And, and there's so many uh, social media accounts out there that are n not people. Like, how, how, do you, how do you know it's a person, not a person? The way in which a regulation is put in place is slow and linear, right. and we are facing an exponential threat. And if you, if you have a linear response to an exp exponential threat, it's quite likely the exponential threat will win. That, in a nutshell, is the issue. Electrode to neuron interface at a micro level, Ch a chip and a bunch of tiny wires. The long-term aspiration of Neuralink was, would be to achieve a symbiosis with uh, artificial intelligence um, and to achieve a sort of democratization of, of intelligence uh, such that it is not monopolistically held in a purely digital form by governments and, and large corporations. Essentially, how do we ensure that the future constitutes the, the sum of the will of humanity? Um, and so if we have billions of people with a high bandwidth link to the AI extension of themselves, it would actually make everyone hyper smart. It's probably on the order of a decade. And by the way, you, you kind of have this already in, in a weird way in that you have uh, a digital tertiary layer in the form of your phone, your, your computers. You basically have this, these computing devices that form a, a tertiary layer on your cognition already. Along the way, uh, Neuralink is going to help solve a lot of nerve, nerve problems. Like so, uh, in fact, just talking about, okay, what would it take to uh, really solve for uh, spinal cord injuries? We already know how to do this, uh, implant electrodes into the motor cortex of the brain, and then bypass the, the severed section of the, of the spine and have uh, effectively local microcontrollers near the muscle groups. It could restore full limb functionality. Very exciting what can be done here. And then it's just memory. Like, as people get older, they lose their memory. And so it's saying it's like, it's incredibly sad when a mother forgets her children. Um, and that can be solved too. I think we should try to take the set of actions that are most likely to make the future good for humanity. I'm pro, I'm pro human. Um, and my faith in humanity has been a little shaken this year, uh, but I'm still pro humanity. Well, I mean, Tesla really faced a severe uh, th threat of death uh, due to the Model 3 production ramp. Essentially, the company was bleeding money like crazy, and if, if we didn't solve these problems in a very short period of time, uh, we would die. Uh, and it was extremely difficult to solve them. How close to death did you come? We well, yeah, within single digit weeks. 22 hours a day? Or like what, how many hours? I was working, yeah, so seven days a week, sleeping in the factory. Uh, I worked everywhere from the, I worked in the, I worked in the paint shop, general assembly, body shop. No one should put this many hours into work. This is not good. People should not work this hard. I'm not. They should not do this. This is too, it's very painful. Painful in what sense? Uh, it's, it, hurts my, it hurts my brain and my heart. This is not recommended for anyone. I just did it because if I didn't do it, then Tesla, good chance Tesla would die. I believe, I believe there's, some, there's some explanation for this universe, which you might call God. So my concern with the CO2 is not kind of where we are today, um, or, or even the, you know, the current uh, rate, rate of carbon generation, but really, uh, if it if we if 
carbon generation keeps accelerating, and we keep getting um, a uh, that that uh, uh, increase in the in the Keeling curve, you know, the CO2 passing yeah. in the atmosphere. And if, if 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 we keep going and if we're complacent, uh, then I think we we could th there's some risk of of um, sort of non-linear climate change. So you know, thus far we, the, the, we've seen the CO2 parts per million be, be fairly linear on, on our time scale, uh, although it looks very exponential on uh, geologic time mm -hmm. scale. Um, and uh, but the, the, there are certain potential non-linear events, like uh, if we raise the temperature to the point where we um, melt the Siberian traps or something like that. And, and methane release. escapes, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's just a, a massive amount of, of sort of frozen dead uh, plant and animal matter um, in um, in Siberia, there's potentially trapped uh, uh, gases deep in the ocean. If, you, if the ocean warms, yeah. that could be released. So, uh, you know, these, this is just, these are just risks that are not wise to take. Um, and since we know that uh, long term, we're going to have to have renewable energy anyway, uh, because we'll, we'll, we'll run out of oil and gas. It's not going to last forever. Um, so we know, we know where this ends up. This has to end up with uh, renewable, sustainable energy. Um, it's tautological. Um, it's really just a question of do we try to get there sooner or later? Um, you know, and, and we should just try to get there sooner. It's, yeah. uh, it's obvious. Well, why run the? Why run the? Ex uh, how long do you want to run this experiment? Uh, you know, I said I, I, I am. People sometimes think I'm sort of like I, I, I'm kind of in the middle of the spectrum. You know, um, I think if we stop CO two production today, which obviously we cannot do without civilization coming to a grinding halt <laughs> um, and mass starvation and, and all sorts of terrible things happening. Um, so we could not stop CO2 generation today, but I think at the, you know, the sort of 400, possibly even 500 ppm level, I, I think it's pro probably okay. Um, but if, uh, you know, as, as the world industrializes and we're sort of at 8 billion people, get to 9 billion people, um, have uh, a lot more industrial output per person, um, you can see the, you know, you know at, at what, what might be okay, at sort of four or 500 um, parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere, might become quite dire at a thousand. Mm. Yeah, um, and the trend is certainly in that direction if we don't do anything about it. So um, that, that's why I think it's just probably an unwise experiment to to run. Um, even if you think that the this, this is this is why I think it should be a compelling argument to even those who would uh, assign a low probability to um, increase CO two causing problems. Like mm. let's say you think it's. 99.9% likely that uh, that adding all the CO2 to the ocean's atmosphere is is going to be fine. So that you, so you're saying there's a 0.1% chance of disaster. Well, there's only one. We're, right now we're only at one planet. <laughs> well, even a 0.1% chance of disaster. Why run that risk? Yeah. That's crazy. So so I think the, the, what's likely to play out is that we will continue to add a lot of uh, a lot more CO2 to the ocean's atmosphere. Um, and also, you know, ocean acidification, as you know, is, is also an issue. It's you don't want to you don't want to sort of add carbonic acid to the oceans and, and change the pH level because um, it destroys reefs. And so it's hard to complain. This part, you know, the outcome so far has been been great. Um, although, obviously, to be, you know, we've we've not uh, we've not yet sent anyone to Mars, yeah. and um, and hopefully will in the future. And um, in fact, just uh, a few days ago, or last early last late last week, I guess um, NASA. So SpaceX, a SpaceX craft will be the, the next craft to put humans on, uh, on the moon. I believe the first human will be a woman, actually, this time. Yes. So uh, this is great. This is great. So, um, but of course, we have to actually do it. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. What to do in such a situation? Inform yourself and keep your financial education strong. We from the Compact Group offer our loyal subscribers a free educational portal with first-hand monetary, financial, and economic knowledge. Enter our invite-only Insider Club by clicking the link below. You will get access to first-class information far earlier than the rest we have prepared a special deal for all our members where you can access a giant pool of Robert Kiyosaki's financial wisdom for just $1. To find out more, simply click the link below and join our Insider Club absolutely free. But there is more you can and should do. Build up several streams of income. 
more and more people realize that they have to take their future in their own hands, but they don't know how and where to start. We from Compact offer our Insider Club members unique opportunities. Strengthen your financial muscle and get the edge. Click the link below. Become part of our free Insider Club. No financial obligations. But there's one important thing you have to know. You have to become active. So do it now. Become active and see you on the other side.